I was looking at all the automobiles with all their parts, including the Volkswagen, with its 5,500 parts. And I said, gee whiz, it must be a better way to build a car. So I built a, a new car frame, and it was three wheels. And the tubular frame was where you kept your gasoline, inside the tube of the frame. And then the shock system. It should be in a linear fashion, the way the wheel bounces. So the, the pivot point is linear, not side to side. Then if you tilt your wheels a little bit this way, the cars are now, they tilt it this way, so the wheels tend to go straight ahead. If they're straight, they tend to go out. So they tow them in and tilt them slightly. So my suspension system was linear, and the spring was tapered so that it, had diff it could respond to many bumps in a row. If it's one thickness, it has a resonant frequency. If it's tapered, it can accommodate. So I did tapered springs on it. So the body and the springs and the t gas tank were all one part. Eventually, it was a little electric motor in each wheel. You had a generator that is a motor, a turbine, that generated electricity. But the, the rotation of that also served a gyroscopic action so your car couldn't turn over. So the one that you built, didn't the it one have I a, did not have all of that stuff at all. No, the one you built, but it had, it had a motor on motor, the wheel, right? Motor on the, in, the, in, the wheel in the wheel was what I wanted. Right. But he said, well, can you use another motor, put it near the wheel? He didn't want to spend the money on making hundreds of thousands of dollars on making a new motor that fits in the wheel. What about the steering? The steering was conventional, but you steer the wheel directly. See, the wheel acted directly, but the steering was activated by linkage, it had to be activated two ways, hydraulically and linkage, just in case the hydraulic system failed. So they didn't call it a car, they called it a motorcycle, because I couldn't make one constant windshield, because the law demanded that the glass be straight, because they figured when you curve your glass, it distorts the image out front. So then I thought of running an electric field through the glass to line up to line up the glass so that there's no distortion. Uh, in other words, I was moving the molecules on a curved sheet of glass to transmit light in a linear fashion. If you run light through an angular piece of glass, it distorts it. It distorts it moving upward if it's this angle, like a prism. So I thought of that. You know, I couldn't get that kind of appropriation, so I made what they would put up the money for. You understand? Know what, what year was that? That you built that car. Jesus Christ, it was 50? before the war ended, just a little before World War II. So mid forties, around that time. So I built the car. Then the guy said to me, "Can you make it crash resistant?" I said, "If you make a car crash resistant, so solid, the people will be killed. It has to give. Otherwise, the people move forward. If you have a car that that has no resiliency, the people get killed." So what I did was I put the spare tire in front of the car, so it stuck out a little, and if a guy sideswiped you, it rolled. So the spare tire served a purpose, not just was in your back trunk. So there was one spare tire up front, one in the rear. Can you picture that? That stuck out a little, little bit, not much. So if somebody sideswiped you, the tire would roll. So then I put that in the boat docks. I put a, a large wheel there so no boat would hit them. It would rotate and not scuff the boat. All kinds of things. Anyway, down the line. Then I said, in the middle of the wheel, we can have a rim that's below the, the air level, about one inch below, with rubber and steel. So if you got a flat, the tire didn't cave in and, and you lost control of the car. So we don't want to make that wheel. We just want to make the car. So. Anyway, he says, how much will it cost to build that car? He says, how smart can the car be? I said, how smart do you want it to be? So I, I try to go as far as I can go into the future. So I turned out this car that was had 32 parts. But uh, down the line... Uh, did, you, did it work? He, did you he, drive it? No. You never drove I it? I never got to that, that, that far with it. So I had it in my garage. And I had it as, with the villa's motor mounted on and on. I wouldn't prove anything driving it around. So 
A guy said, let me take the car to my, he was a church elder, he was a Catholic church, a high guy in the church. He said, I can get you all the money you need. And I, that's when the trouble began. I never got a car back. He said, you'll have to pay for storage. And I began to look at the church differently, too. The vehicles of the future will be highly aerodynamic in shape. Their shape will permit the minimum amount of skin resistance, giving you the maximum distance for minimum fuel consumption. The front end of the car will be equipped with radar or sonar or other sensory devices that can detect the distance you are from other vehicles and maintain that separation automatically. In other words, on a highway or anywhere where two cars might hit each other, the electronic sensors would sense the distance automatically and keep the cars from sideswiping or making contact at all. Now, even if they did and impinge a slight dent in the car, the car will be made up of the memory materials shape memory alloys that go back to the original shape, even when dented. I'm going to take this metal called nitinol. This wire or spring is wound around a mandrel and heated to a specific temperature and held until it cools. Then when you pull it out beyond its elastic limit, so it's not about to return to the spring shape, and then deform it, in many different ways. Then if it's heated, I'll put it on this form so it won't drift away. And I'm going to heat that metal. You can watch it return to its original shape. It's called shape memory alloys. It could be done in plastics, metals, or any other materials in the future. Watch how it returns. And even if the area of the car were removed, they can be rebuilt, in other words, automatically, by the car having a memory system of its configuration, just like the human body, just like perhaps in lizards and salamanders and certain types of organisms today can regenerate parts of their body. The technology of the future will enable our automotive vehicles to repair and regenerate damaged areas. This is a transport unit, or air suspended unit. It will travel five or four feet above the ground and not requiring highways or bridges. You can turn around by electrodynamic means, discharging air on the right or left side, not by tunneled air paths, but just by attracting air or repelling air. 